Uh, we were talking before the show uh, about one of the big questions that she gets a lot, and I guess there is still this theory or this idea that when it comes to, let's say, child custody rights, that the female has kind of top billing or priority in that. Is that still the case? Is that true? What's your experience on that one, Diane? It used to be that the mothers just got custody. Right. Um, this, the Mississippi statute actually provides now that um, that mothers shall not be favored. I see. Um, um, they weigh the Albright factors, which are a bunch of factors about um, primary care and those kind of things. Sure. Um, and make a decision based on that. And the, the, the gender of the parent is much less of a deciding issue and much less um, a part of the equation now. Something that's changed over the years. Yes. The phone line, so yes. we are going to take our email question of the week is from Andrea. Uh, she writes, my uncle was killed in a car accident. He was unmarried, with no children. As his nearest living relative, can my dad file a wrongful death suit against the person who caused the car accident? Andrea, great question. We haven't gotten that one before. Jim, what are your thoughts on that one? Yeah, and so uh, it's very specific, the Mississippi wrongful death statute, as to who can bring a claim if someone is killed wrongfully. And so it basically descends depending on whether you're married. If you're married, it's generally uh, the wife or husband. If you're married with children, the wife uh, or husband and children divide uh, the recovery. Uh, if you're unmarried and don't have children, generally it's the parents, and it goes out from there. And so uh, you basically have to look at that statute every time you get ready to file something, especially if somebody's not married, uh, uh, doesn't have any you know, children, doesn't have any parents. It goes out, and then it becomes siblings that can recover. But it's specified in the statute, actually, who can actually bring a, a wrongful death claim. I can see why you would want to have that kind well, of... Our legal brief, big change in topic real quick here. What are the criteria for arresting someone who's been pulled over on suspicion of DUI? In tonight's legal brief, personal attorney, injury attorney Matthew Medier explains several factors that are involved. Number one, do not drink and drive. It's a fool's game. The state legislature has been told to get impaired drivers off the roads, and it has made laws to do just that. Here's three things police officer and judges consider. Your general behavior, erratic driving, slurred speech, or the smell of alcohol. Your field sobriety test, that's where you walk a straight line or stand on one leg. Your chemical test, that's checking your blood or breath for alcohol. As you can see, it's set up to create evidence that can be used against you. You can't be forced to take any of these tests, but refusing can result in harsh consequences, like the loss of your license. So do not drink and drive. That's your legal brief for tonight. I'm personal injury attorney Matthew Medier. I have a Back question. To you. Um, yes, my mom had um, a car accident, okay. and it triggered her Alzheimer's, and my brother swooped in and took power attorney. At first, she didn't give him all the power attorney over her. He, she just gave him just general power attorney okay and some kind of way they came up with another one that gave him full power attorney he went over and took over everything okay went online and changed um life insurance policies a month before my father died okay they weren't going to pay him the insurance but then some kind of way he came up with the name he was a shannon i'm the only shannon it is but he came up with a birth certificate saying he was a shannon is there any kind of way that i could uh, sued the law, the insurance company, and him for obtaining that. Okay. First off, Denise, it sounds like you had a lot going on. Your mom's accident, your passing of your father. Uh, Diane, what are your thoughts? There's a lot here. Y there's a lot here. There's a lot there. There is a lot here. Um, and as to the issue of the, um, is, is the insurance, is your father still alive? Is that what I, or he's dead. He passed he away. He passed away. Yeah. Um, and the insurance, I guess, was changed prior to his death. You can, um, you could challenge that legally right. uh, if there's some question about whether or not he was competent at the time he changed beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. There may be a question about, of what's called undue influence. In other words, somebody who had a close relationship with him that was able to convince him to do something and he wasn't really competent to make that decision. Right. So yes, you may have a you may have a way to challenge that. Yeah, De Jim, De Denise, uh, it, uh, you got you got a lot on your hands here. Mm -hmm. You need to talk to an attorney, okay? And most attorneys that handle this will talk to you about it for free. Uh, a couple things come to mind, and, and, and uh, uh, Diane's a, a, a right on point here. 
One, uh, whether your father had the capacity at the time to change the life estate beneficiary, excuse me, the life insurance beneficiary. If he didn't, if a court determines that he didn't, then that's not valid. Uh, the insurance company is supposed to go through the proper procedures to make sure any change of beneficiary uh, is done correctly too in an illegal way. Uh, so you have some potential avenues to recover here against both, uh, I can't remember the relative, but whoever changed this right. and the insurance company. Uh, but you need to, you don't need to wait around on this. I'm not sure how long ago this happened. Right. But it's the statute of limitations that is out there that will prevent you from bringing a claim Diane, at some point. Everybody in time. hears about the, the phrase power of attorney. It comes up a lot of times when parents are going through those final stages of their life, sibling. It's an important designation for a family member, isn't it? It is. And um, a lot of times, if, if, a, if an, an older adult or any adult becomes in, incompetent mm -hmm. and it looks like there's a family member starting to take advantage of that person, then I would recommend getting a conservatorship in place to protect that the elderly person's assets to make sure that that no family members taking advantage of that person and making changes that 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 the person wouldn't want made. Sure, and and, and just so, sort of so everybody yeah. knows, a conservatorship would basically be something that's court supervised. So that, okay. so that the court would have appoint a particular person. That person has to answer to the court for decisions that are made about insurance policy, moving money, spending money, that kind of thing, as opposed to a power of attorney, which is just assigned. Mm -hmm. uh, you're signing your rights to someone else who who does those things, not necessarily with court supervision. Diane, could a regular person? I mean, could Denise go and did a conservatorship on her own or? It's like Jim saying, this is a little too complicated. You probably need an attorney. You're going to need an attorney for that. In yeah. fact, the court's going to require an attorney for that because it's a fiduciary I see. issue. So you, the court's going to require um, an attorney. I am a single mother. Okay. And, um, well, um, I'm worried about some custody problems with my daughter. Uh, her father has four children. And in his first relationship, the... Um, he owes over $10,000 in okay. child support for his son. Okay. And the, the reason why they divorced is because she caught him with child pornography for his first daughter, um, completely abandoned her, doesn't do anything for her. Same thing with the second son. Well, I'm scared that he's about to get his act together and come try to get custody of my daughter. Okay. Skylar, that's a lot, too. Gosh, there's a, there's a lot on the, everybody's plates tonight. We're here for you, Gulf Coast. Uh, Diane, where would you go with this one? I would get ahead of this immediately. Okay. Um, I would go ahead and file, you know, necessary documents to get a custody order in place. Um, if he's not listed on the birth certificate, you're a little safer because he has an established paternity. If he's on the birth certificate, you need to get way ahead of it. Um, if he hasn't supported your child and hasn't been a father to your child, uh -huh. you might even want to consider, especially with this history of the child pornography, consider doing termination of parental rights okay. and just completely terminate his rights because if he's a, a child sex predator, you don't want him ever, ever having any visitation, custody, any chance of that at all. Right. Um, but if he is on the birth certificate, you need to get way ahead of this quick, fast, and in a hurry. Okay. Scott, I would encourage you to call uh, uh, Diane next week at, at okay. Office of Ocean Springs. Nobody better to handle this kind of matter. Very serious. And as, as most things in the law, you're better off being in front of it yeah, and so that's good advice to get out in front of the court um, becomes an issue. While she was working at this fast food restaurant, um, there was some damage to her car uh, that wasn't related to the job, but because it was in the parking lot of this restaurant, and they're not paying for it. Uh, what are y'all's thoughts on that one? Uh, well, a couple things. Just because the car was damaged on someone's property doesn't mean that that property owner is necessarily responsible. Right. Now, there's been a, a history of the problems, a problem similar to this, in the parking lot, and they did, did things like didn't have inadequate, had inadequate lighting, right, um, right, inadequate security, that type of thing. Then you may can make be able to make a case that they're responsible. Uh, the first thing I would do is sort of go at this the easy way, and that mm -hmm. is make a demand that they pay, uh, make your case as to why you think they're responsible. If the damage is not uh, excessive, they may very well be willing to work with you on it. And if not, then go talk to an attorney and see if it's worth pursuing. Generally, unless the damages are high, I meaning so excessive damages to the car, right. probably not going to be worth as a practical matter pursuing. Yeah, sounds yes. good. What are some Cindy, of the trends you're that. seeing in family law, family court, and that type of thing? With the, um, the changes with same-sex marriage. Oh, Yeah, yes. we are seeing a whole lot of same-sex couples um, starting to adopt. Um, a lot of ad adoptions going on. Um, 
there are there's some step parent adoptions. One of the mothers may be the natural mother. Um, we're seeing a lot of step parent adoptions. We are also seeing a whole lot of um, of couples adopting children together. Um, until uh, a couple years ago, yeah. um, it was illegal for for same sex couples in Mississippi to adopt, and now they can. Um, so that Supreme Court ruling two years ago just turned that all around. Pretty pretty much did. And okay. then there was a, a, a federal suit in um, in federal court specifically on the uh, adoption ban, about banning, that. banning same sex couples for adoption. Yeah, so that's been time, set aside. But we did want to take a, a quick moment. Jim, you wanted to say something to all the moms to out all there. all the moms out there, for all you do, for everyone, thanks so much. We owe you uh, a great debt. Uh, uh, have a great day tomorrow. Absolutely. For all the grandmothers, mothers out there, and for all those that just mother in their hearts to people around them. Diane, thank you so much thank for coming you. on the show. By the way, you look fantastic. Thank Absolutely you. fantastic. Thank Thanks for coming back on the show with us. That does it for us this week. Join us next week. Matthew Medier will be on set with us when we'll be talking about Ask Us Anything. But until then, good, good. night. <laughs>